Give me an example of a challenge that you feel like you've overcome as far as math instruction is concerned. One of my classes, my seventh grade honors class, we're working with transformations and that requires them to use patty paper, but I can't see if they're tracing things correctly, so how do I know if they're doing it right? So I'm trying to utilize as many online tools as I can to really help communicate those things that I need them to understand to them. How have you made sure that you're meeting the social and emotional needs of your students as well? My answer to like anything is responsive classroom. Like, period. Responsive classroom, period. I could elaborate on responsive classroom until the end of time. Um, that has been probably the one thing that is saving me, especially in remote learning. It saved me last year. I felt it was like the missing link to my teaching when I went full force with it. Today we have a scenario instead of kind of like a question. Kind of like how we did last week with the scenario. This one is your friends came over to your house for a movie night. One of your friends brought another friend with. So there are more people than you plan for. You want to pass out the drinks, but you only have five cans of soda and you need six for everyone to have one. What could you do? There's a misconception that like responsive classroom is just like morning meeting. And there's so much more to responsive classroom. It's in your language, how you talk to kids, reminding language, reinforcing language, redirecting language. Um, it's about welcoming them, right? So we can't welcome them at the door. So every day I make sure I let them in and I still greet each of them by names. When you hear the words you know, drop them in the chat. You don't have to know the lyrics. It's very catchy. Translate to the left one time. Translate to the right now. Go ahead and slide. Translate to the left two times. Translate to the right now. Go ahead and slide. Bring it up, 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 and down. Bring it up, 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 and down. I started playing guitar when I was in sixth grade, seventh grade. Um, so I've always been into like writing music, creating music, just kind of like, you know, in the four walls of my bedroom. It became this little project a couple of years ago where I just, you know, just started thinking of concepts we were working on and like, how can I help them remember it? And the, uh, my other big thing was like, how can I make sure it's like good math? Like not just like, there's a lot of things out there that's like tricks, to remember things, but I was like, I want them to know like the common core way. Like, how am I gonna make sure that, you know, what what I'm singing to them is like true to the common core standards, of course, like that's what's going through my brain. So I just started, you know, fiddling around, playing around, and then just songs were coming coming to me, and that's just kind of how it went. So <laughs> You guys are like blowing up the chat. All right, can I get like a, you know, you could just give me a little one of these so I don't feel like I was playing to a screen. Can I get a little like, a little, oh, there we go, and a little unmuted clap. <laughs> there you have it. 10 out, oh, Eric gave me a 10 out of 10? Wow.